new additions to the crew back there. Uh, anyway, so hey internet, welcome back to a video on time blocking. I made a bit more of a formal time blocking video uh, a couple of years ago at this point when I was in college, uh, and I stand by a lot of what that, that video said, but um, recently I've been in a bit of a funk and I've kind of wanted to lean into more time blocking. I wanted to talk briefly about it, and so pretty much I'm going to tell you what I think are the only five things that matter about time blocking are, and then I'm going to jump into some practical application in my own use case, I guess. Came from a friend asking me on Discord, um, kind of small points about what matters at time blocking, but anyway, if you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm currently a full-time software engineer, which is going to come up in the practical application of things. I'm finding that I have time in my day that should be allocated for work, but that isn't. Uh, and then there's time in the morning and the evenings that I want to put aside for my priorities. Prioritization is something that we're going to talk about today. I think time blocking is something I want to lean on um, and lean into. I think lately, the more I have to do at work, the better for me, because then all of a sudden I get, my brain kind of gets kicked into this higher gear and I have to, you know, organize myself. Casual, chill little talk here. We'll throw some text up on screen. It shouldn't matter. But the only five things that matter about time blocking. One, uh, know your priorities. In the last video I made on this, I pretty much said, know what you have to do and block that in first and then everything gets built around that. But pretty much have a set of priorities, however you define what a priority is, that you want to allocate time for. Keep these priorities pretty general in my opinion because, and this will come up as a recurring theme here in these five things, but we want to keep our time blocks somewhat general. We don't want to make them too, too specific. That's what the to-do list is for. I am very fortunate to have a flexible job. There are times that I'll work at night because I feel like I didn't work enough in the day or something. I am seeking to continue to ramp up my time there. There may be something more concrete for you that might be going into the office or going into wherever you you work. There are concrete hours. For me, I'm working with less concrete hours. However, I think having some sort of stabilization is a good thing. Two, a little formula I came up with for time blocking is that time blocking is nothing more than estimation plus reservation. So pretty much I see estimation as a factor of the past. In other words, you can use your past activity to estimate what you're going to do in the future or today or in the present and reservation. So you're putting aside time in the future so that you in the future don't have to make any decisions. Set aside time for something at 4 p.m. Great decision made. If you know anything about habits, I'm also reading a book about free will at the moment. The less decisions, the better in some sense. I mean, we are decision making creatures by habit, by design. And we also want to use times that work here. So again, estimation is largely based on in the past. If I always have meetings that happen to be scheduled at 2 or 3 p.m., that's a terrible time to put aside for something like Japanese. Right now, I reserve my 12 to 1 for Portuguese. I do about half an hour, but I block out an hour. We'll talk about, you know, why an hour if it's only half an hour? Um, pretty much no one's going to try and schedule for noon. I think that's a pretty safe time, right? Work is a priority above Portuguese, and therefore I kind of have to work around that. If you estimate time and you reserve time, also put in chill time. But also, if you don't stay within the bounds of what you reserved, that's fine. I think your present self is making these, these guesses, is reserving time for your future self based on what your past self has done, right? Those estimations, they're never going to be perfect. They're estimations, not concrete things. And that leads into point number three, which is if you need to change a time, change it. Again, so I have Portuguese at 12 and I have Japanese at four. So if something comes up, I'll change it. If a work call comes up, I'll change it. You know, if it's 12, well, that's about one, two, 3 p.m. for anyone on the East Coast. So if someone wants to schedule a call at three in the East Coast time, and then I'll move Portuguese. I'll probably just drop it for the day. And then if it happens consistently, then that's an indication I should change the time I've blocked aside for Portuguese. Consistency is a big thing. Uh, so when you block aside a time, try to make it consistent. Again, we're, we're habitual creatures by design. We're, 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 made, we're forced to make decisions in life. And so I think the less you can make when it comes to certain things, the better off you might be. And within the span of, you know, don't be afraid to change time. If you finish something early, maybe make a note of it. Like if you block aside two hours for something and finish whatever's going on in half an hour, then change it in the future, change it. Or if you realize you need to take two hours for something you block aside for one hour, take note of that, change it for tomorrow or next week. Time blocking is not meant to be a concrete thing. Again, it's estimation plus reservation. Number four, uh, time blocking, and this was a trap I fell into, you don't have to fill up your calendar. It's fun because it's like a puzzle in some sense. You get to color code your calendar and you get to block in the time, but you don't have to fill it up all the way. Right now, it's nice to not block in specific work times for me. I kind of treat empty calendar time as 
on the job between nine and six, or usually 10 and six, depending on the morning meeting stuff. You don't have to fill up your entire calendar. Find a default activity. Right now I have social media blocked from nine to five, and therefore I'm more inclined to read in my off time or you know, even read to procrastinate. Working within that regular day is a mentality I personally want to preserve. So I'm not trying to fill up my evenings into the night. I might have a bedtime of 11, but that doesn't mean I want to be doing productive things on working on any of my priorities in the nighttime. I'll get to what my four priorities are when I get to the practical point of this video. Make sure you, you build in or at least keep in mind rest times. I just have a thing at 9.30 that just says like, no work allowed and it's the, it's the gesturing no emoji. <laughs> I mean, make sure you're sleeping, right? I'm still in the middle of finding my optimal circadian rhythm. I know that's not an ideal thing. The key thing there is making sure you sleep. And lastly, number five, kind of talked about this, but your calendar is not your master estimator, nor is it super precise. For me, the calendar is a guide. Everything is meant to be a guide, right? Goals are a guide to where you want to be. I use toggle to track my specific times. I might block out again an hour for Portuguese, but what I'll do is I'll hit play on toggle and then I will do my daily Rosetta Stone lessons. Sometimes it takes me 20 minutes. Maybe it takes me 35. Within that hour, I might use that to go read for a bit or go lie down or, you know, get some water, make actual lunch if I'm hungry at the moment. Cool. It wasn't focused on me for a minute there. I love that. I think the only thing that matters about time blocking is that you reserve time. It doesn't have to be precise. I don't have to fill up that hour of Portuguese unless I like really feel like I want to in the moment, but I don't want to force myself to do anything quite yet. Those are the five things that I think really matter about time blocking you. Anyway, let's cut to me doing some more practical stuff and putting these into practice, uh, looking at my own kind of ideal week. So this is my lovely, I have a bunch of different calendars on the left here. Whether you want to separate them is up to you. I think seeing the color differentiation is a very good thing. Calendar is not a precise estimator. I have empty blocks on here, but you know, I, I work the day. So in the morning, um, these morning routine blocks have been kind of ignored for a little while. General funkiness, but you know, I still want to want to get there. So. Step number one here is know your priorities. I have a, a list of these new year goals uh, here and they're, they're centered around four priorities. So priority one is my job development at Chartboost. And I think having one active development project going on at all times is important. Ironically enough, I have Godot uh, open in a window right now. I was studying one of the demo projects. Between nine and five, if there's ever a question, my job gets first dibs on whatever happens. My second priority relates to language learning. Uh, that is Japanese and that is Portuguese. And that is just these things I know I wanna make time for and I don't wanna to have to decide time for them because then you can keep pushing it back. Third thing is running mobility and MMA, kind of in that order. And then the fourth one is creativity. And that pretty much right now manifests itself in content creation, these videos, as well as art, because once again, I'm trying to tackle that. Those are my four priorities. I know what my priorities are. Social life and other things are also priorities, but I'm not gonna go into those because the moment I put those down on my calendar is the moment they become just another thing to do. And that's not what I'm looking to make with social life and otherwise. Using the past to estimate your future, time blocking equals estimation plus reservation. I can go ahead and look at last week. I'm just gonna kind of blur my screen because I don't actually know what pops up. So I look in the past and I, I know that blocking out huge chunks of time specifically for work didn't really work for me. I prefer to just have empty blocks and have that first priority be my default. Like today there was so much going on and it was actually kind of easy to just fall into work habits. And then finally I stepped away to work on this video for a little bit. That was just time I put aside yesterday. I wanted to do it this morning, but I woke up at like 9 a.m. this morning. And again, if you miss it, you can just change it. Doing Portuguese at 12 works for me. I haven't done it this week and last for extenuating circumstances. Next week, again, I have it going through 12 p.m. all the way through. If a meeting comes up for work, I eat it. Portuguese is probably the best example there. And Muay Thai is another good example at using the past. I know that 12 for Portuguese and Tuesday, Thursday versus Monday, Thursday work best for me for Muay Thai. So we're gonna look at next week. I'm removing the Mark Bacon thing because there's an event with someone's name on it. So these are the priorities. My work is on here. Language learning is on here. Physical fitness is on here. Uh-oh, we're missing content creation. For some reason, uh, there have been mornings where I feel inclined to, to work on videos. Let's go ahead and you know set aside some time for content creation in the morning. Cool, now all my priorities are on there. And the morning is great because if I treat this as a priority and it gets overridden by you know doing it during the workday, then A, I don't have to you know feel like I have to catch up on work at night. 
and B, you know, before my stand-up in the morning is a pretty uninterrupted time. I do need a little bit of time to gather myself for the stand-up meeting, which is what's busy at 9.30 in the morning. I have all that, and I have Japanese in the evening. I'm trying to figure out how to balance reviews, which is more of a habitual thing than a scheduling thing. And again, if this doesn't end up working, I'll change it. And then quickly, we're gonna return to that point I made earlier, keep things general. I wrote work on next lifestyle video. Maybe I'm done with the next one. Very unlikely given I'm, you know, pressing this one to the last day. Maybe I start working on the next one or I default to a uh, Katana video, these game design videos that I want to make, have been wanting to make for over a year now. You want to keep it general because if I just write work on best typing sites of 2023, well, what happens when you're done with that? If I write script and then edit and then record, what happens if I don't get to script one day and then I have to write during my recording block? And if it, you know, if it doesn't work, change it. That's, you know, the thesis here. But in my opinion, it's better to keep these things general. So yeah, you know, maybe the mornings won't work. We'll see. Not all times work for everything. I think not all time is created equal. Just I try not to fill up my evenings. No work allowed 10.30 to 11.30. I, I want to be in bed by 10.30 realistically. So, you know. Anyway, the last you know point is that your calendar is not your master estimator. And one of the questions I had gotten was, how do you feel knowing that you have time allocated for everything? For me personally, that's, it makes me feel great. I think a lot of people see time blocking as a very constrictive thing and, and I get that. You know, the more freedom you have, people are genuinely afraid of that based on how we are. Yes, I've been reading too much and thinking too much about free will against my own will. But anyway, just knowing that I, I wanna make videos, I wanna do well in my job, I wanna learn more languages and I want to get better at running in Muay Thai, there's time for that. And I don't have to decide that every night. I don't have to decide that every morning. It's just one less decision I need to make in a day. Honestly, I need that because then all of a sudden when four different work tasks converge on each other, I can, I can ta like, I have the mental energy to be like, all right, these things need to get focused on and yada yada. So, you know, I'm gonna keep it simple. I don't wanna go into the weeds or anything, but in the future, Muay Thai is at this time every night. I'm probably not gonna do it Mondays for all because I don't want two consecutive days on my shoulder. So, I have a Garmin smartwatch and so maybe, you know, I can try and tie up my, my running workout days with Monday, Wednesday and treat those as like a dynamic rest day. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, there's the question that time blocking is like making one giant promise to yourself. You know, it's so easy to make a resolution to learn Japanese, to lose weight, to go to the gym more, to make videos and get to a certain number of subscribers. Yeah, you know, that kind of is. You're kind of making a promise, you're, you're saying words and you're not taking any action. To me, you know, I switched up my calendar blocks every other week just because things kept changing. So if it doesn't work, you change it. Life changes, it's inevitable. And you know, for me, it just, it takes things out of my head. The more I have out of my head the better and I think time blocking while maybe this looks complicated is really simple at its core all you really need is to start off with one calendar and just put aside some time for your classes and just you know get them out there it makes things a feel less infinite you know if you want to make a list of everything you have to do that's another strategy that works but B and this is the big thing for me lately that I know I'm putting aside time for the things I want to do I may not get around to doing it but I know that 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. was the time I set aside for videos. Whoop de do if I miss it, you know, work is more important. I get to do Japanese later. Knowing that I put aside time for these things is so much nicer than being like, okay, tomorrow I have to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That, that's about it. You know, I'm curious to see if you have any thoughts out there about time blocking or to-do lists or, you know, how, how you kind of manage that getting things out of your head thing. The process can be convoluted, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be convoluted. Time blocking is just estimation plus reservation. Drag out a time tomorrow, based on you know what you did yesterday. Use that one day of data points. And then as you go forward, reflect or don't reflect. Just see if you remember what works and what doesn't. Your present is a combination of using your past to put aside time for your future. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy. And uh, don't forget to stay awesome. Peace out.